Hello everyone and welcome back to Zoo Crafting! I am Zookeeper Siri and we are here at the Path to Tate's Pier in Swan Lake, as you can see from this handy dandy little sign right in front of me. But we are back and I have managed to get the willow trees looking good. Oh my goodness, I forgot how difficult it is when you deal with leaves that are like a certain number, I think it's four, maybe three or four blocks away from wood, and then they all just want to disappear on you. What fun is that? What fun is that, I ask you? There should be leaves everywhere! In fact, now I'm kind of tempted to make like some sort of little um, oh, what do they call it, Ash? Like a little hedge, hedge maze or something like that. Oh, that would be so fun. But let's come down and look at how our beautiful willows are doing, including our big old willow right in the middle of the lake right here. Well, it's not in the middle of the lake, in the middle of the pier, I mean. And I think it's looking a lot better. I really like the root system that we built for it. It still looks really skinny. And you know, when I think custom tree, I think something that has a little more heft to it, but a willow tree is really, skinny that's the thing they're skinny and they have the big 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 beautiful leaves that just kind of hang down really long and low and actually when you hear a whole bunch of those like metaphors or sayings like bend in the wind like the willow tree they're supposed to be long and supple that way where they just kind of take the wind or any storms and instead of breaking because they're really like stern like maybe a birch tree or an oak tree and they just want to stand up straight willow trees will actually bend quite a bit in the wind and that keeps them from cracking and breaking when there's storms. So I guess it's okay if it's a skinny little tree. It's still really nice to come under. I think we can do our fishing okay. In fact, let's go ahead and we'll, we'll try really quickly. All right, stand next to the leaves. Can I do some fishing? Well, let me fish. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. And then we have our little bobber in the water. Ooh, that could make it kind of interesting. Did you guys see the leaves like fall in front of your vision? That could be kind of cool. A goldfish. You're kidding me! We got a cute little goldfish! Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Alright, let's go ahead and we're gonna put this little thing right in here. But yes, I hope you guys are all having a wonderful day today. And today we are once again going to be working on Tate's little pier. And I want to get it done today, at least with the fencing. And then we'll start working on some of the other pieces. But I also had an idea. I had an idea because I was thinking about the different kinds of creatures. Okay, no, it's not in there. I was thinking about the different kinds of creatures you could find in a lake. And I was thinking how much I want to teach you guys about some of the creatures, the animals, while we are building our little dock. And it occurred to me I want to talk if I can find it about the snapping turtle so this little turtle right here we're gonna call this a snapping turtle and I want to put him right down here inside of a log and I think it would be amazing we'll turn him into a little NPC and we can have a little snapping turtle glaring out at us from inside a log right down here and he can just be glaring at everything because snapping turtles look like just these vicious little dinosaurs they have these triangle heads they have a powerful bite these snapping turtles have a bite so strong that it can go through bone so there are rumors like of people losing fingers to snapping turtles that they tease they can definitely open up a good gouge in your skin nothing if nothing else like take out a good chunk they're big and they're beautiful and I really think they're just amazing so we're gonna talk about snapping turtles today and we are gonna build the snapping turtle a little log to be under so I want to build him a little log I want to put some little bushes around it maybe we might take this tree away I'm not sure I really like the vines on this tree is the thing hmm hmm Hmm, speaking of vines, should we put vines on the outsides of, I almost feel like, <gasps> we should put moss, we should go get some moss, yeah, we need to go find some moss, the kind that grows up the sides of the trees, and we'll put it over here, oh, I know where to find some of that moss, come on puppies, come on. All right, but yes, so the snapping turtle. How many of you guys are familiar with snapping turtles first off? Because it occurred to me, I'm not really sure if they're up in Canada. I'm not sure how north snapping turtles can go up to the north, and I'm not sure how far down south they go. Ah, and here's my beautiful moss. Look at it, it's glorious. Look at this gorgeous moss. We can gather up as much as we want. It just hangs out on sunflower's tree. There we go. There we go. Nice bit of moss. Nice bit of moss. We'll just gather this up. Watch out, pup pups. Watch out. Let mom gather up her moss. Don't steal my moss, pup pups. But yeah, snapping turtles, they really do like, like little dinosaurs. So if I remember, I will try to put in some pictures of what snapping turtles look like for everybody so that you guys can get familiar with them. You can kind of see what they look like, what they are like. While we're over here, I'm going to come over. Ooh, let's gather up some sugar while we're over here. There we go. 
But when you think of turtles, like a lot of people usually think of really cute little turtles, like maybe the boxier or the box turtle. What on earth? What on earth? How do you even make any sense? I sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, what is going on here? <laughs> There's a bar of gold floating on the ground next to a a albino peafowl. Which I have never seen. But what is happening? Who has who has done such a? I've never. This is super rare. I've never even seen one of these guys before. Wow. What am I gonna name him? Sugar cube or something? Cause he, I, we found him next to like the sugar cane. Why was there a bar of gold next to him? Is he like the prince among peafowl? The princess maybe? The queen? All right, get out. Get on into the little safari net. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. Oh, what are we going to do with it? I'm going to take it over to the P-file area and, like, leave it there for safekeeping. But you guys, is that, like, the queen of the P-file? The king of the p It would be the king because of the tail. So we know that. So it would be maybe the prince of the P-file. We just found the prince of the P-file. And, and a Komodo dragon! What? Why is there a Komodo dragon here? Was he escaping from, like, the evil Komodo dragon company or something? What on earth? All right. I have no idea what that's about, but that's really cool. I have no idea why we just found the Prince of the Peafowl in the sugarcane field. I really don't, but I'm really excited about it. All right, well, let's wander under here. Oh, I'm hungry. And then we're going to eat. We're going to go ahead and let's see really quickly. Just have to do a little of this, a little of that, because I want to talk about the snapping turtle. There we go. All right. And we're going to go ahead and gather up the string, the moss, really quickly to make into string. Ah, but wow, yeah, the Prince of the Peafowl. So that kind of, that's a little bit interesting. I'm not really sure what we're going to do with him. So if you guys maybe have a story about why he was over here, he was definitely in the jungle area. It, was he trying to meet with the Peafowl of Prophecy? Is that what's happening? How do we end up with so many, like, fancy Peafowl who have mysterious stories of their own? Why do the animals have more mythological stories and more going on for them than I do? Who knows? But let's go ahead. We'll take the Prince of the Peafowl and put him where he belongs. Ah, oh, goodness. But yeah, the snapping turtle is usually called the most dinosaur-like of all of the turtles. And that is because it has these really cool spiky domes. It's got, um, oh gosh, like spiky shells, very primitive looking faces. They have a three-point ridge. Oh, it's our little bun bun. I forgot there was cake in here. Oh gosh, I guess, the, I don't know if I want cheesecake filled with dog fur. All right, but speaking of dogs and eating, let me go ahead. Uh, where did all of the... Where did all of the... Oh, there it is. I was like, where did all the rotten flesh I was carrying go? I need to feed the puppies. All right, let's feed these ones. Let's feed you. Where's Lily? There's Lily girl. Here you go, Lily girl. All right, everybody is fed. Thank goodness. And we'll keep moving. But yeah, alligator snapping turtles have... Um, Oh gosh, like a three-pointed ridge that runs along their shells from the head to the tail. And they just look really awesome and mean and nasty. Like they're going to pick a fight with you. Look at how beautiful that tree is, by the way. A peaceful rest planted by Aaron. And they will pick a fight with you too. And a lot of people think turtles are slow. Okay, you guys, if you ever run into a snapping turtle, and hopefully by now I've shown you some pictures so you know what they look like. But if you ever run into a snapping turtle, please, please, please do not antagonize it. Don't poke it with a stick. I was just watching a video on Facebook today where a man decided it would be a good idea to poke a snapping turtle with a stick and it was a little one so I can see where he would be like haha let's see if the snapping turtle like tries to bite the stick and I could see where the fun of that would be I can even understand that part where it'd be like let's see if the snapping turtle is gonna bite the stick and if he bites the stick he'll bite right through the stick how cool would that be and then you know what the snapping turtle did it launched itself into the air at his face and then the video ended. So we don't know what happened to the poor man. Well, I don't really feel that bad for him because he was poking a snapping turtle with a stick. But basically, they lunge. That's how they hunt. Snapping turtles eat pretty much everything under the sun, including ducklings. That's how I really got to learn about snapping turtles for the first time, was that they hunt ducklings. All right. So let's come in here really quickly. All right. Oh, okay. Goodness. All right. And Michi's trying to feed everybody some new feed. And we have a pseudo king of the peafowl. Is this his long lost son, the prince? Or is this going to be dun dun dun? A new peafowl. 
A new pfl who attempts to absurd, like if, if that's the word that I'm using correctly, maybe not, that attempts to throw down, toss over the reign of that pfl and the reign of the beautiful pfl is now. So we'll have to we'll have to leave them be. We'll come back to the mystery that is the pfl in the future. All right, Mitchie, while I'm here, let's go ahead. Oh, there's some eggs over here too. Let's go ahead and do a little trade. There we go, and I can trade those in later. We specialize in raising beautiful peafowl in our gardens. What was she saying? So far, the usual colors of blue and green, but they come in all sorts of different shades. It's amazing. Did you know that wild peafowl are not picky at all about what they eat? They dig into the leaf litter and swallow nearly anything that fits in their beak, including a lot of insects, including a lot of insects, and even small snakes and frogs and anything. They're not picky. If it fits into their beak, they're going to eat it. And that is actually exactly the sentiment. Okay, let's clear that little mushroom out of the way. That's the same sentiment that the snapping turtle has. If it fits into its mouth, it's going to eat it. So the snapping turtle will pretty much eat like, oh gosh, mostly fish. And it actually has a special little tongue that looks like a tiny lure. That looks like a tiny worm. Isn't that so cool? They have a tongue that looks like a little worm. And what they do is they will hold still for ages. They are such slow moving moving not very much moving like turtles they just hold still for so long that they actually will grow algae on their shell which is another really cool feature if you ask me all right let's put some of these plant matter things away i the gold ingot that we got when we found that peafowl is what confuses me more than anything because that gold ingot would have had to drop within the last 10 minutes or so of being near the house otherwise it would have disappeared so the mystery of what that's all about it deepens so all right now we have the moss let's go ahead and put the moss down and then we're, we might build our little snapping turtle. Let's see, we'll just actually, the moss will grow down like that. So we'll put it down in a couple spots and maybe a little bit of moss right there and a little bit right there just to grow down the side of that tree. And maybe like a little bit right here, right here, right here, maybe some over here. There you go. Everybody gets some moss. Everybody gets some moss there. And then maybe put a little bit of moss there, a little bit of moss right there. Oh, look, it's already growing on this side. All right, there we go. Maybe even a little bit of moss there. See, moss can go everywhere. It's very pretty. All right, and I can even put some down here. There we go. All right, and then if we need more, we know where to get it. Oh, that actually looks really nice against the willow bark. That's really nice. All right, and then, oh, we need to cut down some trees because I need quite a bit of oak wood, and I don't have any oak wood. So where am I going to cut the trees down? I think we'll go ahead and we'll start over here because this is where I want to put in a bunch of like picnic tables and things. So I'm sorry, little tree. It's just the way things are. So sorry. Um, not to mention we need, I guess we need to clear a path around the lake anyway. So let's just go forward. And if it's in the way of our path, we will knock it down. All right. And I mean, we could put a little bridge right here to go around the tree or go around the lake. I mean, all right, so let's come over here. I'm gonna clear this one out too. All right, good, 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 good. I need a lot of the oak wood though, so we'll keep going. All right, but yeah, so snapping turtles. Sorry I keep getting so distracted. There's always so much to do in the zoo. So they have that little tongue that looks like a worm that they use as a lure to try to attract fish to them. They hold still under the water. They can stay underwater for up to 50 minutes. 50 minutes, is this a mistletoe? I think this is a mistletoe. 50 minutes at a time, which is quite a long time to just stay underwater and not have to go back up for another breath. So that's quite an interesting little characteristic. Let's shove all these, get in here. Let's see, anything else in the sand, rubber wood? Hmm, there we go. Maybe feathers, why am I carrying a bunch of feathers, Lily? Who knows? All right, let's keep moving, going around. Let's see, you're probably in the way. Sorry, tree. All right, there we go. <sighs> but yeah, these big guys use their tongue as a lure so that they can get the little worms and everybody else to show up. Or they can get, not the worms. They will eat worms, though. They will eat insects. They're very opportunistic. Pretty much anything that comes near them. Alia, that was very dangerous. They will eat. And I mentioned ducklings earlier, and they actually will eat ducklings. Turtles will eat ducklings pretty regularly, and other birds and other little creatures like that if they can get them. And so often, I actually, I think I was watching a documentary one time, and they were filming like these ducklings, and all of a sudden it disappeared. Like one of the ducklings swimming behind the mama duck just vanished. And it turns out a turtle who had been underneath the, the like swimming ducklings swam up 
and just went chomp and he ate one of the ducklings and at the time I was devastated I was just a little kid and it was one of the most traumatic things I had ever seen but that is kind of the cycle of life that is why mama duck has so many ducklings in the very first place is because she knows some of the ducklings unfortunately are not going to be making it so they'll eat ducklings but mostly fish that's what the little tongue that looks like a worm that serves as a lure so they're fishing fishing turtles they're kind of like they're 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 fishers in their own right so let's see is that enough um maybe just a teensy bit more this is actually helping to make like a little path around the lake too so that's helpful but yeah they're they actually do go fishing for their food which i always thought was really interesting so let's see what else did i learn about them they will also eat carrion and they'll eat a little bit of aquatic matter. About a third of their diet is aquatic matter, like the algae, the grasses, the other things that will grow at the bottom. Jump, jump, jump. There we go. The other things that will grow at the bottom of, um, you know, the lake or along the sides, they're almost entirely aquatic. They will spend pretty much all of their time underwater. The only time they ever come above the water and to start moving around is if they're just popping up to the surface to get a quick little breath of water or if they are going to be uh, laying eggs. So the females will pop up and lay their eggs when it is time. But other than that, they don't really come up to the surface. All right, everybody sit down. <laughs> Alia, what am I going to do with you? Look at her. She's just, Alia, get up here. There you go. All right, there you go. Alia, you're sitting in where we're going to make the, the snapping turtle log in just a little bit. But I said I wanted to finish this today. And because of the Prince of Peafowl, we kind of got a little distracted. So let's come along here. And let's just put these down really quickly. All right, let's go. And then after we get the dock done. And oh my goodness, you guys have been coming up with some amazing ideas for what we could do on the dock. Like putting all sorts of buckets along the dock. Putting fishing poles along the dock. It is pretty darn amazing. I'm actually really excited to try to put down some devincing fishing poles. I'm not sure how it will look. I don't know if it'll be quite what we're going for or not, or if it'll just be a miserable failure, but I'm at least going to give a good attempt. And there are actually some buckets that we can make that we could put on here. Look at all the buckets of stuff. Oh, maybe it'd be fun to have a bucket shop where it's just like buckets, buckets and buckets of buckets. And yeah, there we go. Little water bucket that we can actually make from deco crafting. So we'll probably make that at some point. But yeah, so the, let's see, snapping turtle. I don't know. I know that they don't actually mature enough to start having babies of their own, to have, start laying eggs and mating and all of that stuff until they are about 11 years old. And let's see. Also, I'm kind of curious about something. Do you guys think we should leave some of the fencing pieces down because is it easy to fish like this no look at this okay so is it easy to fish like this like walk up to the edge okay that's not too bad actually and then you can just do this oh the fish got away with my fancy rod and everything so you can just easily fish like this but not go over the edge or should i make it so that there's like a gap so you can just toss your fishing rod I don't know. I think because the other thing is I don't want the swans to have an avenue to get out. But what if I did this? Like you just had a little gap like this. Ah, right. oh, dang it. Now I'm on the ground. <laughs> but what if you had just like some little gaps like that in the fencing? Would that make it easier to fish? Let us see. I think it would. Because then you can just come up here, but then you could also fall in. And someone did mention that it would be a good idea to put a ladder. So if people fell in, they could climb back up the ladder. But, you know, because then you could come over to the edge and then just stand kind of right here and do your fishing. Or is it better to come up? I mean, it feels the same if you just walk directly up to the edge and you're not standing behind the fence. All right, come on, fish. I'm, I'm being a snapping turtle. There's my lure. All right, what do we catch? Oh, this is a big one. It's a carp. It's a 72 pound carp. <laughs> now that is definitely a big one. Oh my goodness. All right, so let's go ahead and put this away. So there's a little carp and I need some more carpenter's barrier, unfortunately, because I really want to just finish at least that part of the dock today. <laughs> and then tomorrow we will probably build up a nice little, little log home for a snapping turtle, because I think that would be really cool. I wonder what we should name him. Maybe it's a him, maybe it's a her, who knows? All right, and then what's the recipe for this again? All right, let's go ahead. The recipe is like this. 
and like this and then we need to make a whole bunch of these fences um we'll just make some extra we probably don't need that many but it, it always helps to have some extra of those all right there we go phew there we go all right let's at least get the fencing done today so yeah adult let's see females will mate with the males in the spring and they'll lay eggs about 100 days after mating, which I always think is such an interesting number. Why 100? Why 100 days after mating? Who knows? All right. Maybe I should leave like a couple. I think I'm going to leave just like a couple little gaps. Whoops. Okay. That's that's too much. Too much. That's not quite what I wanted to do. All right. Uh, there we go. Like maybe a couple gaps just like that. And then you can come along and you can get a closer look. Yeah, that would be good because then you could get a closer look at the swans. Once we fill this thing with swans and ducks and who knows what else. Usually I find the waterfowl often gather in huge numbers when they do start like gathering together. Like the seagulls in our lake. We're in the middle of the state. We're not, we're not along the part of the state that is against the Atlantic Ocean. But we have so many seagulls, so, so many seagulls on our lake right now. And there's also like uh, anhingas. There's beautiful anhinga. Well, they're kind of weird looking, actually. They're kind of like a tube with a beak. Honestly, that's an anhinga is a tube with a beak. And so they look a little bit weird. And we've also got, let's see, what else do we have? We also have the blue herons, who I really love. We have different types of ducks, and that's all on one lake. So I'm thinking this lake might have quite a bit. And, by the way, we do indeed have a snapping turtle over in the wetlands, which is where they're normally found since they're almost entirely aquatic. The snapping turtles can be found at the wetlands. They can be found in rivers. They can be found in pretty much any big body of water, and they get big. They get really big. If you guys actually go and look at one of these zoo vlogs that I did at the North Carolina Zoo, one of them opens up when we were walking across the bridge to get into the zoo. There's a huge bridge that you walk across this big lake when you are entering the African section. Oh my gosh, did I really run out of... I ran out of, of logs. Oh my goodness. Okay, that's it. We're going to go cut down a couple more trees because I'm at least getting the fencing done today. Even if I don't have the seeds to like decorate the edges, at least the fencing of the dock is getting done today. All right, come on, puppies. At least the fencing. Oh my goodness. I didn't realize we'd go through it that quickly. But yeah, you walk across this huge bridge over a kind of, it's a, it's like not a deep lake, but it's a really broad little lake. Maybe a lagoon is probably the better word for it. And we saw, we looked down and we saw this huge snapping turtle, the biggest turtle that we have ever seen outside of like sea turtles. And it was very, very exciting. Darling and I were along the edge going, whoa, and we like stood there for forever. I got some video of him. He looked really, really cool. So you guys can actually see a little bit of a video of him. And he looks smallish in the video, but that's just because it was very difficult to get like close to him. All right, let's get some of this Swedish ivy so we don't let it go to waste. All right, there we go. Da, 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 da. All right, gathered it up. Gathering it up. Oh, do I not have any room? I don't have any room. Puppies, help me. Mom's running out of space. Mom is running out of space, puppies. Oh, gosh. All right. But yeah, so if you guys want to see a kind of far away picture of a huge snapping turtle, go look at the vlogs and updates playlist. and Or even the, I think I made a new playlist and it's like expedition playlist. So go look at the expedition playlist and you can see when we went to the zoo and we saw that big giant snapping turtle and how awesome he was in the water. So yeah, they get really big. All right, let's see. Get, get, pick, and I'm trying to pick you up. Am I? Oh my goodness. What is up with this? Just so many things. So many things. I just don't have enough room for all the things anymore. Puppies, help. I guess you guys are full up if you're not picking anything up too. Goodness. Goodness gracious. All right, I'll come down here and gather this up too. There we go. All right, that should be enough to finish what I'm doing. I don't know if it will be though. So just to be on the safe side, I'm going to clear out a few more trees. <laughs> I feel bad for cutting down so many trees, but you know what? I need them. I need them so that we can get this project done. And it's kind of clearing out the little the little path that we need to go. Look, we're already kind of looping around, looping around the park. And I need to eat some cookies. All right, so we're going to finish the fencing, and at least that'll be done for today. And then tomorrow, we'll work on making the snapping turtle exhibit. You guys are probably sick and tired of hearing me talk about the snapping turtle by now. It's just fun, and it's been a while since I have kind of tried to spotlight a creature while we are busy building. So that's really fun. I'm trying to think anything else about them. Um, Gosh, I can't think of anything else other than just they look really cool. They move pretty slow, uh, unless they're lunging, since that's how they hunt. 
Oh, sorry about that. I guess the chestnuts kind of tickled my nose. Let's see. Oh, and they don't really have any predators. Most turtles don't, but snapping turtles who can deliver a wicked bite don't really have any predators once they're full grown. But I actually was stunned to learn this. Their number one predator is humans because apparently they are way over harvested right now for their meat and they're not really endangered so there's no if oh i forgot to put fencing up along the side of the no, actually i don't think we'll have fencing we won't have fencing up along the side of the dock because this will be just be nice and open and you can just look into it there all right i feel better all right but yeah um humans are actually over harvesting snapping turtles for their meat ouch oh what was that for oh that startled me so bad all right, is that better? No? Okay, I need to reach this block down here. Oh my gosh, that was really terrifying. All right, there we go. And there, jeez. Didn't need that fence to be such a brat to me. All right, we'll come along the edge. All right, put this down. And just as a side note, thank you guys so much for your tremendous support on how we're just kind of taking things a little bit slow and doing it block by block. Almost every episode now, people are like, keep doing it this way, Siri, keep doing it. This is what we're happy for. This is what I love being here for. One block at a time, so we do it together. So it really is deeply appreciated because sometimes I feel like things move slow. That's why I'm determined to finish this episode when we get the last blocks down. All right, there we go, there we go, there we go. And then next time we'll have to, all right, there we go. And yes, done! Next time we'll have to gather up some seeds and put the moss up along the sides and build up the little snapping turtle log. So I think that'll be fun. But yeah, um, oh, and just that last little note, that's what's happening to snapping turtles the worst right now. They don't really have any natural predators, but habitat loss, which makes sense because they're losing a lot of the lakes and the rivers and streams that they need. And the fact people over harvest them right now for meat, meat. Why would you eat a snapping turtle? I can't imagine that tastes very good. And it just, it seems silly. It's not like they're, they're efficient for getting a lot of meat off of. And they take forever to grow up. They don't reach reproductive maturity until they're 11 or 13. And their longevity is about 45 years in the wild, but 70 years in captivity. So if they're only laying eggs usually every other year, and then the hatchlings get eaten because that's the only vulnerable time in their life by raccoons and birds and things, then why on earth are you eating a slow reproducing species? I just don't understand that. I don't understand that. I can understand eating bunnies faster than I can understand eating a snapping turtle because it takes forever to get old and be big enough. So yeah, don't eat snapping turtles. Don't eat any turtles. Don't even eat the bunnies. I, I, well, you're talking to the vegan, so... <laughs> But all right, you guys, I hope you're all having a wonderful day. Let's finish off the morning or the busy, busy day we've had with doing a little fishing. All right, what do we catch? Oops, I forgot. It's not left click. It's right click. But yeah, we'll do a little bit of fishing just right here in the rain. What can we catch in the rain? I'm, I'm not a good fisher. Was that something? All right, I've got to listen for it. Come on up. Oh. Ah! I am apparently not very good at fishing. Last time. Come on. Yay! It's another carp! Okay, and it's an 89 pounder this time! How many fish fillets does that make? Five fish fillets! Holy moly days! All right, so we have an 89 pound carp. So it's gonna be very interesting because I think with the aquaculture mod, you get different types of fish in different types of water. And this would be considered like fresh water because we're in a forest biome. And you also get different types of fish depending on the depth of the water that you throw it in, maybe? I'm not sure. We'll have to look into that. It's very fun. All right, I'm going to put this away. Look at those gigantic carp we have. And I will see you all tomorrow when we will build a little snapping turtle log and decorate the sides of the fencing here with some seeds so they can have some good old moss growing up the sides. So until next time, guys, bye-bye.